Hey there folks, Rinny MT here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Rum Reborn, and we're officially starting patch point two patch point two point one. Apparently I cannot speak. What else is new? But first, let's go ahead and turn in the couple of quests that we have to turn in here. Seas have carried you back to me, I see. I've got wind of me erstwhile Medes triumph and your contributions as well. You'd have made for fine pirate yourself, I Bring the pirates together with promises of treasure and glory. <laughs> That's the ploy then I know, I, And from what I hear, it's already caught the ear of many a buccaneer. Ploy and I go back a ways, we do. We were comrades, friends, and I. Even more than that on occasion, if me memory serves. I've got nothing but respect for the man, but building a proper army out of the little buccaneers won't be easy. Any idea he comes up with, you can bet Admiral Merlewood's already had it. Treasure and glory are all well and good, but do you tr know what truly calls a pirate to the open sea? Freedom. And that's something that the maelstrom can never offer. But I can only hope that the others of me kind answer the call. I. Then, and only then, can I be sure that me decision to part with me yellowjack comrades was the right one. Alright, so... Love this quest to go ahead and turn in. Ah, oh, Arya, so good of you to return. Tales of your deeds precede you. Knowing Lumps of Lamental Lay in good hands allowed us to attend to matters of import elsewhere, but I'm relieved to have you back with us all the same. Much work remains for the realm. Go ahead, grab the money, or the money. We are going to ignore Oriange. Oh. Uh, I did that. Interrupting Arya, my lady, the gentleman from Ashgami Exports has just left. <sighs> I understand now why you didn't want to receive him. You did well, Tataria. Please inform the guards that we will not be receiving any further guests this afternoon. Thank you, my lady. Ever since we defeated Gaius von Bale, Sauron and destroyed his ultimate weapon, the eyes of the world have followed their every move, scarce remembering to blink. Where once we worked in, in secret, few with precious few friends and all too many enemies, we are now besieged by benefactors, each one more eager than the last to offer us his complete support. A true embarrassment of riches. Of course, every promise of patronage comes with a price. Some make their intentions known from the start, while others endeavor to engage us with more subtlety. Dress it how they will, the message is ever the same. We shall help you, but only if you help us. <sighs> the gentleman Sitara spoke of was more brazen than most. In exchange for certain supplies, he would have us resolve a business dispute. Naturally, I refuse them, as I have every other merchant of his ilk. Alas, the syndicate's overtures are not so easily rejected. <sighs> we formed the silence of the seventh dawn. It was with the goal of serving Eorzea, not the interests of individual Eorzeans. Our neutrality is fundamental to our cause. In my heart, I know this to be true, and yet, and yet, if accepting these offers of patronage could empower us to do greater good, might they not warrant greater consideration? Our Baldesian colleagues have been generous beyond measure, but we cannot expect them to. Forgive me, I did not mean to burden you so. Yep. My Ursha shows dilemma may not be wholly misguided. Might I impose upon you to consult the others? They are like to have their own opinions on this matter. So 
like try and clean a spot off my monitor here. Literally right on the text boxes. Alright, so now we literally have to go speak with everyone. I wish I'd taken this before turning the other quest, but then we wouldn't have had as me breaking out laughing trying to start the story. <laughs> God, that was so random! What the heck? So I'm just in fists of wind for running around because I want my slight movement speed increase. Recall you are meeting with the Admiral shortly after the little Minson sent word of the summoning of time. Then may have you all may all then may have you also recall my words to our host, Senza Merlewib, that her people had broken their treaty with the Kobolds, and that the beast moon had justly responded. They would have been called to intervene in a conflict which she herself had invited. In sp I spoke, in short, the truth. And wherefore did I speak it? Because, owing no allegiance to Limsa, I felt no compulsion to allow the limits to distort the facts to fit a narrative which justified their actions and absolve them of guilt. Upon this subject, Minfili can expect a similar reply. Our many da dalliances with the city-states have already weakened their claim to neutrality. But the path she contemplates would see us relinquish it entirely. <sighs> fortune begets power, and power fortune. That we, and especially you, have power is beyond doubt. The question is what to do with it. You may also be interested to know that there is a growing belief amongst the refugees that Alamigo could be liberated. If only the Scions would commit their strength to the cause. Yet theirs is but one of many causes. We stand at a crossroads, Arya. Each path is paved with good intentions, but where they lead is far from clear. I've been receiving a lot of gifts lately, but Papa Limo keeps making me send them back. It would be so, wouldn't be so bad if some of them are really nice. I mean, very nearly abandon your principles nice, you know? None can deny that we would benefit from more support, but if it comes at the cost of our principles... Neutrality was ever a delicate matter. I've lost count of the times I've had to explain to people that our allegiances need not necessarily lie in the same place as our headquarters. Mind you, if we are to sell our services for guilt, we might as well declare our fealty to Ulda now and I have done with it. I'm quite sure Ida would enjoy the bribes. Yeah, maybe. I'm like paranoid whenever I finish like recording something that I messed up the sound somewhere. <laughs> it is a lot powerful to track the covetous as well as the needy. Thus, doth prudence dictate that those with power proffer aid with one hand, whilst the other resteth ever on their hilt. Alas, we have not the luxury of time to decipher our petitioner's machinations. Nay, not while the beast tribes do labor on scene, defy and defeat to raise up their fallen primals once more. Doubt not that they shall return, stronger and bolder both, nor that we shall be the ones to meet them. The sacred chain shall ever be ours. Tis but a pity we are so few, and our fortune so finite. That's cool, Oriandre. We're, we're still gonna ignore the rest of your quest for now. Because... You know, oh, hey, Alpha now. Hmm, the situation is not wholly unexpected. I too have given much thought to our organization's future, though it would seem I have reached a different conclusion. Mayhap it is time I made my feelings known to the antecedent. Come along, Arya. Oh no, Arya, is Artemis? Use our council and you shall have it, Minvilia. The Scions of the Summit Dawn must leave Ulda. We must do what? So long as we remain within Uldan territory, we'll never be free to act with impunity. Moving our headquarters to Vesper Bay only delayed the inevitable. We have demonstrated our capabilities and the Syndicate has taken note. They will not suffer our organization to remain independent now. We are far too dangerous for that. Surely you realize they are the reason Vesper Bay still lacks an Aetherite? They know full well how beneficial one would be to our cause. Which is why it and other favors will be denied us unless we cooperate. If Odaw is no longer suitable, where would you have us go? 
experience has taught us that the appearance of neutrality is as important as the reality. Accordingly, we must keep each of the great nations at arm's length and plant our banner in a place which all agree to be beyond their borders. Mordona. Revan is told to be precise. It lies within neutral territory and offers all the essential facilities we require. By way of an additional benefit, Hell is also frequented by a veritable legion of adventurers who may serve to supplement our ranks. I am, of course, conscious of the fact that we have developed a certain bond with Ulda and her people over the years, but I truly believe this to be the best course of action. As you yourself observe, we have invaluable ties to the local community, forged through years of concerted effort. Ulda is our home, Alphano. To cast aside everything we have built and started anew in that desolate wasteland would be beyond reckless. Decision is yours to make, Antecedent. I ask only that you recall the shared purpose which first moved us to found the Science of the Seventh Dawn, which moved you to found the Path of the Twelve, ere that. We aspire to an ideal, you and I, just as my grandfather did. That makes us more than mere comrades in arms. We are as much your family as. That will be all, Alpha now. I'm sure you have some familiar familial affairs to, of your own to attend to. Your concern is most generous, but no. I have left it in the hands of men better suited to the task than I. I cannot very well allow my personal affairs to come before the needs of the Order, after all. Alright. Well. Wait, seriously? Bronze pieces? What the heck? I'm actually just gonna take this uh, dark light band of striking so I can desynthesize it. <laughs> Pretty sure I'll get more than 300 gil out of desynthesizing it. And if I don't, well. Moving on. Hey, I can, I can, I can get more decent stuff. Trying to adjust this here. Let's move it over there. Moving on. Leaving Ulda. Has it truly come to this? Hmm? Oh, Arya. Pray attend to Alpha now. He is engaged in some business or other and requires your assistance. Pray be on your way. Alpha now waits upon you and I have much to think about. Oh, and tell him he shall have my answer in due time. Okay. You say so. Let's see here. Let's see if I, I regret this decision. Decent. I probably do. Eh, maybe. I don't know how much that sells for. Hopefully more than 300 gil. <laughs> Confound it. She knows what must be done, but still she hesitates. All oh, because of those fanciful, these fanciful rumors. Hmm, I should explain. Amphilia's mother, well, adopted mother, was among the great many who perished during the calamity. Flahaman was her name, though you may know her better as the songstress of Ulda. She was a performer of singular talent and much beloved by the people of Eorzea, not to mention a certain Charlian minstrel. As you may imagine, the news of her passing was greeted with shock and disbelief by her adoring fans, many of whom refused to acknowledge what had happened. Her body was never found and only served to encourage speculation. Mampilia, too, struggled at first to accept the truth, but as Flahaman's absence stretched from months to into years, she saw that there could be no other explanation. Until recently, at any rate. For whatever reason, rumors have once again begun to circulate that Flahaman is alive and well. One of our informants, Father Iliad, has sent word that the woman matching the songstress's description has been seen of late at the seaside resort of Costa del Sol. If we could succeed in tracking her down, I have no doubt that any worries that now plague Mentilia's heart could be a, might be assuaged. I mean to set forth for L Nasio once, unless we can be in there and inquire with Master G Gigi Ruju as to the veracity of these rumors. Uh, let me check 
my tombstones. Okay. I'm kind of slacking on doing though, so I'm a little bit behind on them, but. Ah, flying. Sweet Siren of the Sands, my Miko Timus, why have you forsaken me? Sidon's Bane, I, I mean Arya, what brings you to my humble resort? Plahamit? You mean it's hell me, the goddess who made, made flesh who dwelt among us until so recently was the songstress of Ulda? Cat's woman, if I had known that, I would have changed my bedpost and never let her leave. Oh, for shame. To think that she now applies her trade for the riffraff off to the west or wherever she said she was going. It's a tragedy, I say. A tragedy! West is it? Thank you, Master Giju Ruju. Your information will serve us well. So, uh, there are any number of places she could be. I shall begin my search by the docks and see if any witnesses might have some knowledge to spare. I would be most appreciative you could travel wine board and do the same. Now, we could teleport there, which obviously, yes, would be the fastest way. Or... We could fly! So you could only start doing this with patch 5.3 when they introduce flying in Realm Reborn areas. And it's just, I like flying over, I like flying over these sections of map that were impassable before. It's, it's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. And of course, yeah, you know, there's limits on where you can go, and hey look, there's Wineport! Ah, <sighs> flying. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's you. Well, but isn't Arya the savior of Wineport? So what do we owe the pleasure? Oh, yes, we did receive a customer matching that description. She was a delight to behold, to give the woman her due. Her perfume was so ghastly, I had no choice but to eject her from the premises, interfering with tastings, you understand? Yeah, that would do it for me, too. If she is your quarry, why not consult your blind associate? His olfactory perception is without peer. Given that I could smell a woman from a mile away, I dare say he could smell her from ten. Alright, but first we need to get some information from Jungbar. Eh? You wanna know if I've seen Mikote last by the name of Flahiman? I wish. I haven't seen the last of any description for far too bloody long, or excepting yourself, of course. I feel like that line just is added in for any female character. I see you have had many grand adventures since last we spoke, Arya. You must share them with me sometime. Girl from a while ago, one does not forget a perfume like that. It's sort of robust and intoxicating, yet simultaneously familiar. Reminiscent of a bloom native to these parts, in fact. Says much when we spoke. She complimented my powers of observation and asked me where she might find some of the flowers. So I told her to follow the road south in the rain cutter gully and then head east after crossing the second bridge. Flowers which grow in the shade of the cliff have the strongest scent, you see. If you make haste, you may yet find her there. Okay. Let's fly down there. Ah, oh, it's so wonderful. I'll never get over being able to fly in these areas. He had to walk and run and be on the ground for for so long. And they have all these annoying things to go over. <sighs> yes, it's so great. Oh, hey look, we have to do a battle. I guess I should get back in the pistol fire. Alright, let's, let's destroy this... Gobu and speak with Blahaman, who have to be named right next to us. I am in your debt, stranger. I did not realize my activities had aroused the Gobu's ire until it was too late. <sighs> the oils could be made. You oh, excuse me. Oh my gosh, what a yawning. I had it up sleep. The oils could be used to make perfume, you see, and I. I'm, I don't. 
Who are you? Who do you serve? Pairs have already found their woman. Consider me impressed, my friend. Songs for Civil will die, I presume. Infilia, or shall I say Asilia, is looking for you. Asilia? You are the very picture of health, my lady, yet the world thinks you dead. I can only conclude that this was by design. The question is, why? Not everyone who endeavors to find me does so with the best intentions, child. You will be pleased to know that I am fully intend to reveal myself to Minfilia when the time is right. Oh, well, that does please me more than you know. But tell me, sojourns in the forest of Thanasia's side, when exactly will the time be right? When I deem it so, do you imagine I travel all this way on a whim? As I was telling your associate prior to your intrusion, I came here to harvest these flowers to use in the perfume. Does that satisfy your curiosity, or would you interrogate me further? My apologies for the interruption. Anyway, now that we have all that which I wish we came for, might we continue this conversation in a safer locale? Wineport, say? I believe I can fly! Okay, maybe I will finally get over this and start just teleporting everywhere again, but... I can fly! 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 Where are you? There you are. This this is not at all how I envisioned it. I'm scared to be. I was beginning to imagine the emotions you will go through in Philia's heart when she reunites with her mother after all these years. Let's just go ahead and grab that. And all things in time. Okay, now it's bugging me. It's over there. I need it on the left. You say my daughter awaits us in Desperate Bay, yes? I have kept her waiting long enough. Let's be off on the next ferry. I can finish fashioning the perfume along the way. Understood. Come with me. It will be my pleasure to escort you to the Waking Sands. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. We're just... Poof. 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 Okay. I was just gonna use a ticket, but... Poof. We're here. to see that you have a guest. Lawman? Asilia. You're like this in years, are ya? I never truly believed it when they told me you were dead, but what kept you away for so long? The Imperials came for me as I knew they would, and so I resolved to stay as far away from you as I could, unless their pursuits of me endangered you and our cause. I can think of no better way to grant you the freedom to continue our work. And continue what you did, achieving things I would not have imagined possible. Followed your every success and celebrated in secret. I'm so proud of you, Asilia. I learned from the best. I have a gift for you. Celestia perfume, you remembered. <laughs> How could I ever forget? You were all the time. If, I, if ever I lost sight of you, I could find you again just by following my nose. <laughs> I did not think it was made anymore. You must have gone to so much trouble. 
That's not a trouble to me, my darling. I fear I cannot say the same for Arya, however. I could not, not have made it without her. Thank you, Arya. Thank you both. Something else. This is the cat's eye I found. All these years you kept it. My father was a member of the Alamegan Resistance. When I was a, yet a child, he brought me here to Ulda. The accident which claimed his life happened shortly after our arrival. It was Lahamin who took me care of me then. She raised me as her own, taught me everything I needed to know to survive. Hmm, I am no stranger to the facts of your history, yet I fear I failed to grasp their implications. It is clear that there is much I do not know about you and your mother both. One of our first lessons to me concerned mining. I was a very dedicated student. This cat's eye was the first stone I unearthed. It wasn't much, of course, but I was exceedingly proud to have found it nonetheless. So I gave it to Laham uh, Lahamin as a gift. She said it was beautiful, but there am I the loss. Why are you returning this to me? Is something amiss? No, Asilia, nothing is amiss. Quite the opposite. Do you realize how far you've come and how much further you may still must still go you and your allies have accomplished more than i could have ever have hoped you have succeeded where i failed and made me so proud that the words fail me but even as i marvel at the woman you've become and all the many things you've done i cannot help but think of that i cannot help but think of that which you have yet to do and of what it may entail Acilia, daughter you cannot stay here anymore. You and your scions must leave old I. Mohammed. You built it once, Cecilia. You can build it again, and this time, we'll do it together. Truly? No, the time has come for the science to leave Vesper Bay. Sorry, I thought I just felt a small earthquake. We shall establish a new headquarters in Revan's Toll, as you proposed. Much work lies ahead of us, inform our fellow science, and send word to the students of, of Beldesia. Preparations begin at once. grab that and desynthesize it and hope I don't regret this. Okay. It's still too high. I'm <laughs> laying the foundation. It is all well and good that we have found ourselves a new home at Revenant's Toll, but there is so much to be done and in so little time. Our first step will be to secure the cooperation of the Adventurers Guild representatives there. Were it not for the Guild's considerable efforts, the original account for Revenant's Toll would have never been established, much less a more heavily fortified successor. However, with construction still ongoing and resources in short supply, it seems that certain that the Guild will require something in return for their support, sympathetic to our cause, though they may be. Whatever they ask, I should not begrudge it. To be plain, we need them more than they need us. Without their assistance, such essential tasks as securing new facilities, cultivating relationships with local merchants, and recruiting adventurers would prove difficult, if not impossible. You need not concern yourself with such matters antecedent. We 
Really, Alpha Nell, if I need concern myself with anything, it is surely matters such as these. Indirectly, perhaps, I submit that you might instead concern yourself with a different matter. Namely, to whom the resolution of such matters might best be entrusted. And here I am, nor do I come alone. May I present the esteemed emissary of the Adventurer's Guild of Revenant's Toll? It is an honor antecedent. Upon reaving, uh, receiving word of your intentions from Master Alphano, we thought best to begin talks at the earliest available opportunity. Know that my associates at Revenant's Toll hold the scions of the Seventh Dawn in the highest regard. We should be honored to welcome your organization. There are, of course, certain provisions which must need to be negotiated. If it pleases you, I would do so. It does. Madam, unless I'm much mistaken, you are the one known as Arya. Are you not? <laughs> May I say, what a pleasure it is to make your acquaintance. Yeah, I dealt with Marlboros for your guild. So I've born spoke of you in the most glowing terms. To seal an Imperial Reaper and then use it to infiltrate the Garlean cast room is an undertaking few would, compl would contemplate and few will still survive. Shall always be welcome, Revenus Toll. I we hope you will favor us with your presence here again ere long. Well, well, it would seem your reputation precedes you, Arya. Mayhap I should dispatch you the Revenant Toll with all haste, as first intended. But before that, I dare say so you have earned yourself a rest. After all, you have traveled so far, and there is already so much you have done for us and for me. We will speak again and on. Till then, take care. Excuse me, I need some water. Ah, Arya, were you able to get some rest? I would ask you to come with me to the solar. Often though, has just returned. I've seen there's something he would share with us. You're here. Good. I come bearing news. Negotiations are concluded. And? Our friends at the Adventurers Guild have agreed to furnish with us with new facilities and materials in exchange for our assistance in the ongoing defense and development of Revenant's Toll. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn shall have a new home in Mordona, the Rising Stones. A bittersweet victory, if truth be told, I cannot deny that I have come to look forward to the Tars tales of our many guests and their many, many demands. <sighs> From the waking sands to the rising stones, passably poetic. That wasn't your doing, was it? Hmm. I too have news to share. In expectation of this momentous day, Personally informed the Alliance leaders of our plans, and they have pledged their full support, General Raban included. Moreover, I've decided that the time is right for us to cast off our vestiges of our Order's veil of secrecy and announce ourselves to the world. Are you sure that is wise, antecedent? If anything, it is a mere formality. Our existence is quite possibly the worst kept secret in Eorzea. Let's affirm our identity, proclaim our achievements, and that all may know what the Scions of the Seventh Dawn stand for. Well, obvious risks apart, it would be nice to receive a little more recognition. And the people have a right to know who saved them. It is my hope that this gesture will encourage the people of the Orzea to place their trust in us. I would reveal to them the true extent of our power, yes. But in so doing, I would show that 
them that it is a power accountable to no one and at once to all. Yeah. And one of us, we who have felled primals and faced down the Empire, to you, my fellow scions, I would say this. Prepare for the challenges which lie ahead, for they will be great indeed. Great essay, yet no greater than us, and we will rise to them, because we have time and again, united as one. Hmm, there must be some way I can... Wait, that area is said to be rich in minerals. Huh? Maybe I should ask for them and to teach me the basics of mining, too? Okay. Well, let's speak with Minvilli again. You ever wonder how he does it? I often know I mean. It's almost predictable that he should appear with an emissary of the adventurers. Gil, I'm here moments after I've expressed the need to go force ties between our organizations. Truly, his sense of timing rivals even your own. Sending such mysteries aside for the present, I have a task for you. I'd like you to deliver these documents to Slathborn. They concern our forthcoming move to take care on the road area and represent us well. Yeah, <laughs> I got the, all the words in the sentence, just maybe some not in the right order. It, it, it was the order that made more sense in my mind, okay? Okay. I was told to expect this I am, but I didn't expect it to be you. It has been far too long, Arya. You have something for me, yes? I do. Right. Hunt stuff. Let's see now. Yes, yes. Everything appears to be in order. You'll be staying with us for a while, yes? Would that we had a dozen more like you. Since we don't, though, we'll just have to give you the work of a dozen men. <laughs> I, I just. I just. Mmm. Doubt. I don't know. <sighs> Magic technical difficulties. Not the story, but... Greetings, Ari. You've just come at the right time. A visitor is waiting for you in the workshop. A friend of Sid, it seems. Realizing your preoccupation with other matters of import, suggested she wait at the seventh heaven until your arrival, but she refuses to leave. For you have a very brash client on your hands, friend. Are you ready to go inside? I fear waiting will only make her more irrational or irritable. Fine, fine, fine. Hmm. So you're Miss Ariana, eh? Took you long enough. Name's Jesse, deputy and president of the Garland Ironworks. <laughs> Don't look too impressed now. In truth, I'm nothing more than an engineer, but thanks to you. Filling Master Garland's head with the damn fool ideas of heroism and saving the realm. There's no one else around to fill his golden breeches. We've been busting our collective arses on these orders from high wind skyways and are only are still only scripting by. Real problem is, with Master Garland gone, productivity's dropped like the knickers on a stone's throw strumpet. The company will be in deep if something ain't done. And that's why I'm here. Sure, our machinists have made their fair share of chronometers and plasma lamps. I mean, something grand. Something they'll have our clients on their knees, literally begging us to take all their sparkling gill. Why don't you show me the magic of armor you borrowed from our friends and the, the Garleans? Yes, yes, I know all about your little foray into the Praetorium. You can thank Biggs and Wedge for that. I reckon there's a lot we can learn from that Reaper, and after all you've done to distract Master Garland, I'd say you owe us that much and more. This is amazing. Do you even know what you have here? Listen to us really mention. I've never heard anything so sweet. And the servo mechanism should be... Wait, a mammacore? Why didn't I think of that? They're so easy to come by. Mass production would be as easy as stealing candy from a baby. Or, of course, from a mammoth. But what in the seven blade hells have you done to the cannon's poor convergence modulator? Burn it out, firing victor rounds after slaying some family of rabbit squirrels, no doubt. It's a wonder the whole suit isn't a steaming pile of molten slag. Such a waste. 
What in Biller's name are you looking at? You need something to fix your prying eyes on. Try the wall. Any road, I can't bear to see such a fine piece of work in such a sorry state. I'll patch her up as best I can, but you'll need to gather the parts needed for the job. And give it as one of the um, adventures you seem so keen on. I make 49 Magitech Converter, they make 50 Magitech Oscillator should do the trick. Oh, and the Magitech Cannon Barrel make her 51. I can't guarantee she'll be as good as new, but at least she'll be in better shape than she's in now. Which still ain't saying much. Eyes on me, Arya. I ain't done with you yet. That is, unless you know whereabouts one might stumble across the spare converter, oscillator, and cannon barrel? No? <sighs> Didn't think so, so here's a hint. It rhymes with cast from Sentry. You see, Garlean made technology is what we're after, and I can't think of a better place to find some. Up with you now. Pushy. Pushy. Um. So I'm gonna have to make a trip down the cast from Sentry, but first let's go ahead and grab the main story quest from Slothborn here. I hate loading Revenant's toll. It's possibly a primal. to do the work of a dozen men, I see. Ha! <laughs> but I just... Even I can appreciate that an important woman such as yourself has a little time for menial tasks. But since you're here, mayhap you'd be keen on having a look around the Scion's new home. See that impressive structure over there? That's the place. It was originally built to house the branch of the guild, you see. As such, it comes complete with a tavern where adventurers can rest from the road, fill their bellies with good food and drink, and their ears with tales of fortune to be had about the realm. It may get a little raucous at times, but I imagine it'll be as good a place as any to recruit capable men and women to your cause. Come with me. I'll show you around. Is that you, Arya? I'm, I'm quite sorry to interrupt. I have about some urgent news. We've gr received grim tidings from Gadonia. It would appear our aid is required at once. I ask you to report back to the Waking Sands with all due haste. Is everything quite all right, friend? Mmm, no. I can't say I'm privy to the details, but it would appear that this is no time for a leisurely tour. But no worries, you can rest assured that I'll see to all necessary arrangements. i return any time after you've seen to your more pressing matters. All right, well, we need to head back to Waking Sands, but first, what does that cost? Okay. Here. I can fly, it's so wonderful. Fly low so we can actually not examine myself. Examine the storage craze to find what we need. What's so wonderful, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, there's a random triple triad player down here. Just saying. Is there nothing else around here? No. Back this way, I guess? Maybe. So remember, it's not in somewhere you. Uh, camp! Nah, I think that thing's gonna aggro me regardless, isn't it? Aha! Thank you, flying! So great. Oh, great. I love it. Alright. Okay, seriously, why am I really? It's probably back here. Hard to guess. Yeah. It's 
in the ring. There's storage crates here. One thing it's safe to say it is back here. You don't see me. I'm not here. Okay. We're officially hitting me. I'm too lazy to walk. Or even to fly. Let me guess. You've lost no broken, and no traded for magical beans. The parts we need. No? What do you take me for? Well, color me mildly impressed. I was half expecting the worst and got, well, less than the worst. Don't get all giddy on me now. You're still off the hook for stealing away, Master Garland. I'll admit, I'm beginning to see why he might feel the need to latch himself onto an adventure like he might a stray pup. Alright, let's see if I can't salvage this mess of a masterpiece. Phew, I think that's it. Both magic and both hands should be functional. That said, I'm no guardian. There's no third eye hidden up in, under these lovely locks, and there's a great deal I don't know about their machina. Can't guarantee the cannons won't miss fire, but then again, miss fire is better than no fire, eh? Even so, I wouldn't recommend using the weaponry in actual battle. Speaking of fire, it's high time I got back to the ironworks. Patching up those cannons has given me a few ideas. You take care, good care of the armor, or you'll have to answer to. You have me to answer to, Arya. So. Your magic armor's magic thick and photon cans are now operational. They can be accessed via the pet hop bar while riding your mount. However, please note that these weapons do not employ lethal force and have no effect in combat. So it does mean you can just so happen. Let's not do it inside, just in case anyone's like earlier on in story and spoilers and at least be minorly mindful of that, I guess. Mount guide. Summon up and get slightly out of. Not good enough. So, yep, we've now got our actions we had in the Praetorium. We can now use them just casually, like so. So, I probably really don't need that hat hot bar. I'm gonna, gonna adjust that real quick. Didn't think about it. Um, apply. Hopper. Oh, I know where I could get rid of that. HUD. Here we go. Settings. Do not display pet hopper. There we go. Link. Um, what am I forgetting here? Okay, let's head back to Best Bay. We're almost not happy to do this anymore. Yay! Oh, I was supposed to speak with Tataro. <laughs> I'm like just kind of autopiloting in here and I'm like, ah, wait. Not that far, ready. Explains why the uh, marker was not on the map and I wasn't paying attention outside. Oops. Hi, Tataro. I definitely didn't run right by you. A messenger from the Twin Adder came to the Waking Sands while you were in Mordana. Wasn't privy to his conversation with the antecedent, but I did see the look on her face after he left. Something is definitely amiss. Could it be the exile of Garuda again? Or maybe half Imperial forces have been sighted within the shrub? 
Well, whatever it may be, I'm absolutely certain there's nothing you can't handle. Now go and ask the aunt to see if there's anything you can do. I couldn't I have just gone to her in the first place like I kind of tried to do anyway. I knew this day would come, yet I pray it would not come so soon. We have reason to believe another primal, or an enemy resembling one, has been summoned in Gridania. Thine arrival is customarily timely, Arya. The etheric wave will leave little room for doubt. My talents will be needed ere long. If there, if there be truth in my suspicions, it's a familiar foe we face, though one quite unlike the Lady of the Vortex. We dare not draw conclusions without evidence, but as Uriandre says, the readings bear a strong resemblance to one observed more than five years ago. Though I had hoped the Muggles guard beyond such follies. Suffice it to say, this disturbance warrants a full investigation. Thy presence hath been requested by Commander Hulo. He awaiteth thee at the Adder's Nest. Pray hasten to Gridania, Arya. Ida and Papalima will rendezvous with you there. May you walk in the light of the crystal. I think there's fuzz in my mouth or something. Alright. Gridania! Let's go. A pleasure to see you as always, Arya. Thank you for answering my summons. Quite frankly, I could think of no one more qualified to... Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Allow me to explain. Wait, what? Oh. That, the title is worded very badly. I'm like, a level 70 coffer? No. That's the item level. Uh, it's only because it's an actual level of like, wh what? Huh? I think this is actually better, is it? No, it's not. It's just that I don't have an HQ there. Hail to the king! Kubo! Not long ago, the Mughal Kuplo Kop there visited the Abyss Nest to request an audience with the Elder Seeds here. Spoke with an eminent threat to all Mughal kind, one which would imperil the entire Twelve's Wood if left unchecked. It proved an able amb. Ambassador to the Sylphs, and we would have you reprise a role in our dealings with the Mughals. The rest you should hear from Kuplo Kop himself. He awaits you with it with the seat, other seats here at the lowest stand. Oh boy, Kupo. Whatever shall we do, Kupo? 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 Ahem. Sorry. Sorry, Kupo. I can't help myself sometimes, Kubo. Um, what well, stand is Contra Skill. Kubo. So, Silent Conjurer, Kubo. Your signs have already arrived, madam. May I show you in? Kubo. It's so pretty here! Actually, I just really like the music. It's so, like, soothing. Honestly, just this music is soothing. Please, you have to stop them! But, but, but you mustn't kill them! They're not bad, Muggles, Koopa! They're just misguided! I just don't know. Firm thrashing is in order! Yes, but no! Calm yourself, Kubla Cop! Can you not see it? She hasn't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Be quiet this instant. Pray, forgive this witless house for her sister. Most grateful am I that you have come, Arya, and upon such short notice. Truly, Gridania could not wish for a more stalwart ally. But you are doubtless eager to know where for we summoned you. Our friend Kubla Cop has brought to us news of a most unsettling development. It would seem the good King Mogomog the Twelfth has returned to Eorzea. A curious thing to hear, I know. Truth to tell, I cannot myself 
say for sure if he is a genuine figure from history or some manifestation of Mughal mythology. A couple of here would have me believe the former. Once upon a time, we Mughals served the gods in the heavens. It was quite nice up there, unspeakably beautiful, unimaginably spacious, and with a literally endless supply of wine, Kubo. In spite of this, or possibly because of the last part, the gods eventually became discontented and started squabbling, which made life jolly difficult for the poor Mughals. So God King Magga Mag the Twelfth made his glorious name live forever, decreed that the time had come to leave Kubo, to leave Kubo. The realm of man would suffice, he said, so all the Mughals should live there instead. Unfortunately, the two realms are so far apart, we couldn't safely fly down. But good King Mogamod, may his miraculous foresight ever be praised. He knew exactly what to do. Kubo, he had a rope, you see, the longest one ever woven. His this he nobly held while his subject climbed all the way down to the world below. And that is how we Mughals came to this land, Kubo. All of us except good King Mogamod as well. May his courageous sagras never be forgotten. He alone will remain in the heavens so that Mughal may I at last know peace. Except that he has not remained in the heavens from what I understand. The reason, that being the reason for your contacting us, yes? I'll bet he tied the rope to something. Good thinking. Remind me again what the problem was with him returning to Eorzea? The problem, either lies in the fact that he was summoned. It's our belief that good King Mogul Mog the Twelfth is a myth made manifest via a means akin to those employed by the beast tribes in the summoning of their gods. Wait, you're saying a handful of Moogles with a buttload of crystals wished really, really hard and he just sort of appeared? Would that even work? What I cannot fathom is why they would even try. If Gorilla humbled and the ultimate weapon destroyed, what new threat could have prompted them to take so drastic a measure? Might that not in itself be the answer? Twice in the last half decade, the Rorzia has been brought into the very brink of destruction, only to be spared at the last by heroics of a chosen few. To you who brave these tempests and survive by virtue of your own strength, this latest period of peace will doubtless seem like a welcome respite. But to those who had not the power to defend themselves, who were spared only by another's grace, this is merely the calm before the storm. I think the Moggle's Guard are afraid. Afraid of what tomorrow will bring, and that things may not end so well as they did yesterday. And that fear has driven them, driven them to call upon a greater power, one they believe can be relied upon to protect their loved ones and their homes, come what may. I assure you, the Mongols Guard only wants to protect the forest from outsiders. But ever since the return of good King Mago Mago XII, may his boundless grace fill our hearts with love. I've started to get a little carried away, Kupo. Verging on a lot, in fact. Like the selves who summon Sephirama, you mean? Hmm. We cannot discount the possibility that this entity is an influence in Moogles in a manner similar to that of a primal. We share the same concern. Whoever, or whatever the king may be, is our belief that he poses a threat not only to Mughal Khan, but to Gordania as a whole. Thus do we beseech you, Arya. Confront good King Maga Mog the Twelfth and drive him from our midst. Humbly, I do thank you. The sanctuary of the Mughal's Guard and their liege lord is concealed by magical words. Brother Yasumi Zion of the Conjurer's Guild will doubtless be able to Im offer insight on how they might be dispelled. Pray seek his counsel ere you proceed any further. Okay, that Moogle voice, like, hurts my throat! <laughs> oh. Alright. Back out we go. Moogle voice hurts my throat, but I'm gonna keep doing it, I'm sure. <laughs> Goodbye. I forgot the Koopa on that one, I'm sorry. Any rate, let's go to the Contra Skill, Kippo. That's, that's becoming a conjurer. 
Welcome, Aria. Welcome. <laughs> that you should be the one to face good King Mago Mog the Twelfth is of great comfort to me and to the elementals both. As I am sure you know, the Mughals are not by their nature a warlike race. Yet, should the king be some suffered to remain, it is like that his influence will bring about a change in them. Thus does it behoove us to defeat him quickly before any lasting damage is done. Make whatever preparations you deem necessary and inform me when you're ready to seek the king. Alright, let's grab that, I guess. Alright. You have selected Regicide. The wards barring access to the King's Sanctuary can only be nullified through the use of enchanted keystones, the self-same method employed five years ago when the first the King was summoned to Eorzea. It was with great regret that we were forced to sanction the slaying of the guardians who then held the keystones, for none were in our possession at the time. By the grace of the elementals, however, we have been spared that burden on this occasion. Kublukov confided in me that he had been entrusted with a set of keystones by the Mongols guard themselves. Yet wishing not to betray their confidence, he begged me to find some other means to gain entry to the king's sanctum. Alas, I have been unable to do so and dare not labor any longer for fear the Mughals might succumb to the corrupting influence of their liege lord. They must needs have Kublukov's keystones are yet pray go to him and beg his assistance. He awaits you at West Shore Pier. Impress upon him our greatest need, and I'm sure he will yield. Alright, so this pier is, of course, all the way up by the Lancers Guild. So how how will you do it, Cabal? Oh, he told you about that. Well, there truly is no other way. I'll do it, Cabal. Take the ferry to the Sweet Plum Pier. I'll go on ahead. Right. Let's go to Sweet Bloom Pier. I don't think we want to quite go all the way to a Hawthorne Hunt. I think. Besides, it was right there. Yeah, because it's like literally right here. Oh boy. Him. <coughs> I have water ready. Don't you dare lie to me, Koopa! I know what you're planning and I won't allow it! Open your eyes, Gopo! The king will never be satisfied no matter how many crystals you bring him! We offered you a choice and this is how you repay us by consorting with us all raw? Imperials, Gridanian, Sylph! You are no different from the rest of them. Actually, you are worse, Kubo! Traitor to his kin's muggles! He plots treason against the crown! Enough! Couple of will answer for his crimes soon enough, for as will all who defy the will of good King Mugamog this well. May he reign forevermore! Kabo! <sighs> the king is planning to purchase wells with his enemies, Kubo! We've gotta stop him before it's too late! Hold on. It's right here. Entrance of Marsh is deep within the Bramble Patch, Koopa. If you meet me there, I won't, can nullify the word. But be warned, the Mongols Guard has set traps to lure enchanted beasts. I can't hide from them, so you'll need to protect me, Koopa. Escort Koopa a cop safely to the warded entrance. Should you fail to defend him or move too far away, he will return to Sweet Bloom Pier, where you may rendezvous with him before trying again. Oh, God. We... Oh, oh. <laughs> I forgot this part. Let's just go and piss a fire now. So I'm not running way too far ahead. Well, I mean, we don't, at least don't have to emote to him 50 times. Faster, Hoopo, faster. Slightly outrunning him, but not terribly, it looks like. I am going faster. You're the one who's not going faster, Kubo. Squirrels. Squirrels! 
Seriously, I completely forgot about this part. Uh, it's like, yeah, I can just fly over there. No. Oh my gosh, seriously. More enemies. Thanks, Dragana. You're the one slowing me down, Kubo. Alright, take a left here. Oh, there you are. Sorry, I couldn't see the Moogle through the trees. Um, I'm just gonna keep going. I don't see where my enemies are. There they are. Kubo, but you keep stopping me, Kubo. Now accessible. So yeah! Welcome! <laughs> Welcome to how primals are now going to be from here forth. There's going to be no more four hands. Right into the eight men. They do eventually stop calling them all hard because it's like, it's, it's just kind of how it is. But yeah, for now they're still going to be calling them hard and yeah. But anyways, we will go confront Good King Mago Mug next time, Koopa. So thank you all for watching, Koopa. If you enjoyed the video, Koopa, consider liking, commenting, and or Koopa subscribing. <laughs> God, come on, can I keep this up? If you really enjoyed it, Koopa, consider supporting the channel. All support greatly helps you keep being content like this, Koopa. You can find links for that in the description, along with links to me on social media, Koopa. So thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is Rinian T. Signing out. Come on! I can't keep that up much longer. I'm gonna go crazy for Moogles doing this LP. I can already tell you that. <sighs>